back to GFF and Friends, the podcast. The podcast that choosy moms choose. Hi, I'm your host, GFF, a.k.a. Todd. And joining me today is my adorable little friend. You know him from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Ever heard of it? Cabin in the Woods, maybe you've seen. Transformers, correct? It is my favorite friend, Tom Lang! Hi, it's me, Tom Lang, and I am here on this podcast. Human Muppet. Should we do... It'll, it'll go out of frame, but let's do... Yay! Muppet Arms. You know I specialize in Kermit Arms. Muppet Have you arms. seen me do this before? Uh, yeah, you do the best Kermit Arms. Meanwhile, my mother used to say that I have Muppet arms because when I turn, if I turn too quickly, they kind of just flop onto my body. Yeah, they have like a I have Muppet arms. M- motor, um, your brain, your motor skills. <laughs> yes. Area of your brain is not lining up. Yeah. Well, I just what, learned that that is a, oh, it's a thing and Daniel Radcliffe has it. Your it's, brain thinks you're doing one thing and your body no, does I another? Lo- I look, I clicked on a, like it was uh, actors you didn't know have disabilities and I went through a list of people <laughs> who have. It's like a BuzzFeed list. It was, but it was on Instagram, some, I don't know. Uh, it was clickbait. But uh, it said, Daniel Radcliffe has such and such syndrome or something. And it was, it, was, it was just like something that small kids can have where their motor skills they're, it's still developing. Yeah, and it, it was defined by like they're very clumsy and they're, yeah, but it's yeah, actually yeah. a motor. Do we, wow, I just got so. <laughs> well, you've had a day. Right out the gate. It's like a, you've been a little frazzled all day. But um, thank you for coming to Glendale to record this podcast with me. I, okay. Is it Glendale? I Where think, am I? Am I in Montrose? I think, Where I think it's am like I? a, I think Montrose, it's so Montrose is near. We could be in Montrose. I think it's also like a made up neighborhood name for a okay. city. Here. Montrose might be fake. I don't know. Here's my hot take. Uh, you said you're coming to visit Los Angeles. We are, if, if there's a possibility that an actual bear will swim in your pool in the backyard of the home, that's not Los Angeles. You're no longer in Los Angeles. Correct. We that's are Glendale. In, you're in Southern California. <laughs> yes. But it's not Los um, Angeles. So you're technically not visiting LA. Correct. Because I watched your video and said, hey, I'm coming to visit LA. <laughs> Do you want to be on your podcast? Do you want to be on my podcast? Well, and if the world is kind, it is only 20 minutes to everything. But well, ba- back again. Back well, again. I, it took me exactly one hour to get here. So from, from WeHo, which WeHo in the afternoon. In the afternoon, again, on a the Friday, world's not kind. The world's and, not kind. So there's lots of traffic. Um, and also, I was two hours late because I lost track of time. But I will say, like w- when I went to Akbar last night to see you in Ghostbusters, took 14 minutes. Just see, that is why I've got to move away from here because yeah. that makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. Why is it 10 minutes away? In evening times. And an hour during the day. Also, I've noticed, so I haven't really come back and spent much time around the city since we moved to Seattle three years ago. Mm-hmm. I have been more social in the past 10 days than I have in four years. But I've noticed, I think the population doubled. It's just nonstop people all the what? time. Do you find it to be different? I feel like there's people everywhere. It kind of freaks me out, makes me sad. And I don't really know what to do. But I, I feel like I keep seeing things like people are leaving Los Angeles in droves. The, the economy is dead. The business is dying. Industri- Hollywood is over. I guess I just people haven't been escaping. to those parts yet. I feel like everywhere I go is just, you know, nonstop traffic, no parking, all construction. Why is everything construction right now? God, this is boring. Um, no, this, this is what is, they tune in for. No, this is, is what it? they want. Yep. Yeah, this, this is, is the most a LA. This is the most LA conversation I've had this in a long a time. Inside baseball lifestyle podcast that people want to see. Is it? Yeah, because no one, you know, no one knows LA except for us, the two people right here. So oh. we need to okay. tell the secrets well, of Los Angeles. It's where would it's, you live if you left LA? Well, first choice, London. You are there a lot. Or at least via your social media, it feels like you're in I the know, UK. Like, a lot. Oh my god, you're traveling so much. You're called it's, an illusion. It's called banking content, which is what I'm doing. This this yeah, episode you, will actually come out a week after the election, never, so we could be really sad. Right yeah. Now. Oh. Mm-hmm. No, I'm hopeful. Same. I actually might be in London during the election, so maybe that's a good thing. Um, <laughs> I don't go to a London. I don't go to London a lot, but I will be in London. I soon. will. Well, because the little movie that I filmed there a few years ago is finally 
having its festival premiere. And That's exciting. I mean, it's like a 50 seat theater, so it's is fine. That, so it's not that did exciting, you but also book a job for like English tourism. I feel like you did something for like Brit Box. I did. I some. I think I was making videos like an ambassadorship. I was making videos about British stuff, and then Acorn TV reached out to me and said, "Hey, would you do?" an ad for us and i was like would i i use your service every night from approximately 7 p.m <laughs> to 3 a.m it is the best when stuff you use actually reaches out to you and it's not a fake relationship such as that's Hellman. the best correct um yeah I'm so wearing i did it right bunch, now i did a bunch <laughs> it's inside of me as i'll we speak. never tell uh yeah so i did a bunch of ads for them via my social media and then in england like you went over there to do that right well most of the things i were just filming here because it was just like okay watch this show watch that show um but then i pitched them an idea because i was over there filming this movie i said hey i'm here and you know i'm just gonna go and i have like a whole week off in between the shooting on the weekend and i was thinking i could go do a little tour of some of the locations of my favorite shows and do maybe like a, uh, um, sort of like a travel documentary. Yeah. 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 Uh, and I was, I almost said, uh, Richard Attenborough, but he's animals or is yeah. it David Attenborough? Who's the guy that does the food? Uh, who's no longer with us. Oh, I, Oh, Anthony Bourdain. Yeah. Like that. Um, and so then it took them a little, like it, I went and filmed some stuff because I, I, they were. It was kind of a maybe, mm -hmm. and then they finally said yes, and I needed more footage, so then I had to go back <laughs> over Thanksgiving vacation. But I made such great friends with the people in this movie, which is called "Time Travel Is Dangerous," coming to a film festival near you, and hopefully one day on a streaming service. That's exciting. Um, and so I took some of the the two lead girls from the movie. Um, who are not actors, by the way. This movie is my favorite thing because they're, it's, it's about two women who find a time machine in London and they go back in time and they steal things to sell at their vintage shop that they own. <laughs> I've always thought about doing that like Back to the Future 2 style of like, yes. Just make money at it. Yeah. But the kicker <clears throat> is that um, the two women are playing themselves. They were not actors per se and they're just two women who own a vintage shop. In real life. In real life. Oh, that's fun. And they're playing themselves in the movie. Are they kooky? Are they funny? They're so funny. Okay. And they're, they're great actors. And their names are Ruth and Megan. And I love them so much. And Megan. Megan. I love that. That's part uh, of the movie, too. It's like, it's Megan, not Megan. Well, so uh, a thing I like to do on the podcast is t talk about our origin story of how we met and how we know each other. So um, the our lore. origin story. Should we get the story. lore straight? Yeah, the lore. Um, so our origin story, we've known each other for like 13 years now, 12 years. Um, mm -hmm. And I want to say it was all through 30-minute musicals. They will be familiar because Brooke has been a guest already. Okay. So we described what 30-minute musicals is. So okay, they already great, know. Great. Um, and uh, yeah, so... We met through 30 Minute Musicals, but we met before we were in a show together because you weren't in Independence Day, which was my first show. Independence Day. Da, 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 da. Um, why am I singing a song that no one would know that it's from <laughs> our musical version of Independence Day? That might be the funniest, the funniest thing I've ever seen on stage is the Vivica A. Fox number. Oh, yes. Is it when she's stripping? She, uh, it's so yeah. She is a stripper in the actual movie, and so in thirty minute musicals version, she is also a stripper. But she, her like eleven o'clock number is about being a stripper. Cause I'm a stripper, mm -hmm. and I like dolphins. Yeah. <laughs> oh God! I and she wish does, like, you could a, see a it. A full pole routine, and it's and played it by a man. Has been played by a man and a woman several oh, yes, times. Yes. Um, it's so funny, and I wish you could all see it. And um. I think but they're all. Is that how you were in that, and I came and saw it? Yeah, probably. And okay. we met through that. I, um, I think Thirty Minute Musicals is such a genius idea, and if it could be cleared and figured out, I think it would be an excellent Shelley Duvall fairy tale theater thing. If we did every movie we've done as a mm -hmm. release, each episode could be a different movie. I think it would be smart for say a Viacom or a Disney who owns Fox, like somebody 
came along and said, okay, we're giving you access to our library of yeah. movies. Feel free to parody them and turn them into musicals. It would be such a fun. Because she's got like 10 now, so we would at least have one season of different musicals and you could film it we could even film it like our town style like we don't we already perform them without most uh sets and props yeah how do we okay. it's very um, on the road i don't know what's what the they, first one we did together home alone i think was the first one that that's we actually you know touching because you weren't in hook right you know I was. oh wait no you were peter I was peter and hook. oh that's hook then we did hook together because i was your shadow i had to carry you around here's my Here's my opinion, though, on the on the ones we do. The ones that I think make the best... Because Hook is a funny movie. I think the ones that we do that are the best ones is when you're parodying... Uh, a serious a very, movie. Like Jurassic Park. Top Gun. Is that the first one we did? I've never been in Jurassic Park, oh. but I've seen it. Did, um, so wait, Home Alone was the one we did together? Home Alone I, Home Alone or Hook. I can't remember which, but Home Alone and Hook were the, the ones we've done together. This, I didn't know you before that. We gay knew each other via gay comedy you know like oh okay maybe through bruce bruce's show yeah yeah just through different talented people that is this is uh rob's mom's kitchen pig she loves to like whenever we have holidays and stuff Um, she loves to write like the menu on the board i mean these this statue is very familiar to me this is like a staple of kitchens and living rooms um like there's a there's a whole line of these kitchen, oh, yeah. of these pigs there's very much like a um a 90s uh kitchen trope of like you either did kitchen pigs we did ducks as i say ducks so like ducks and swans uh tuscan kitchen a la it looked like an olive garden with like jars of yeah. pickled vegetables no we we had the blue and white checkered country time that's what magazine was. country time living magazine yeah style like blue and white ducks geese maybe a swan here and there occasionally a chicken yes but most of the things were done du- we also had ducks ours was sheep because i grew up on a sheep farm and my oh. mom's obsessed with sheep so um ours was baby blue cabinets yellow linoleum like full-on vinyl linoleum tile yeah we also had until i was in high school my parents had the same kitchen set which was you know the 70s harvest colors yes so we had the golden sunset i think it's called so stove fridge uh all the light fixtures and the sink were all the yellow sunset harvest oh, god i wish i hope they kept it if they moved it to the base it's like the basement work sink so it hasn't been kept up but it, it does live in the basement wow. i mean the the oven Do is they gone still have the sheep? no no sheep now it's all chickens they keep chickens so most most of the barns and farmland at my parents' house is uh, for storage or recreation. The only animals that exist are the chickens. So it was a functioning farm at, at one point, though. Uh huh. And I always called it a pet farm because, like, my parents own a construction company, so the farm was like second fiddle. For fun. Yeah. So most of the animals were pets, but there were there was a handful of years where we were breeding sheep and selling sheep to market, but as like a side hustle kind of thing. Yeah. And it's so much work for like pennies, you know, it's just like, did we really need to devote a year and all that work to make an extra thousand dollars or something? So I mean, would you sell the wool or anything? Would you share yeah, they tried the- everything. They sold the wool. We had, a, like, we got to a point where we had like a flock of ducks and then, um, I guess I wasn't taking good enough care of them. And <laughs> then my, the, we were told my parents said we had to get rid of them so we just put an ad in the paper and gave away all the ducks and all the geese and all the chickens and and a man came and he's like i'm taking these ducks to live on my duck and goose ranch and we're like yay that's so nice he ate them he for sure ate them they were definitely i feel like i saw him uh, at a restaurant in town well and that's the thing too is like i don't know if you dealt with this but like uh, growing up on a farm which is the classic kind of excuse for when a pet dies like we took it to a farm growing up growing up on a farm there's no excuse so my parents were just like it died <laughs> you know like whatever happened to rosie that one sheep we had oh she died you know like you just tell kids they're dead maybe that's just my family but they never really softened the blow they were like and what happened to the what would what, what, was it mean it was sold or or, uh, or, or so they or it? they literally died um and w- there was a time i mean my dad for like a year was like i'm gonna start butchering chickens <gasps> and freezing like processing them and it was the grossest meat ever like ho- like homegrown chickens like the meat was chewy it had no flavor it was like yeah because they're not being like um, full of (laughs) exactly 
I will say I was highly traumatized from all. Uh, I mean, I had did a whole show called Heavy Petting. That's about all the pets that I had. I love how, it. I've seen it. And how they died. I've but, seen two of your shows. Um, <clears throat> I, I definitely don't. The only meat I eat now is chicken because I had the chickens and they were, I mean, I, know I see videos about chickens now and they're like, you know, live in the house and they're friendly and they're smart. But back in the eighties and nineties, I was just like, I don't like, they weren't, they weren't cute and, and friendly to me. Yeah. They weren't pets then. So I didn't, so also, I don't feel, I don't feel so bad that, cause I would love to be a vegetarian and I'm trying, but sort of my last stop is chicken. Well, and, I, can, and I won't eat ducks because I, what about just, seafood? Ducks are my, my favorite. I don't like ducks just for the flavor. It's too gamey. Um, duck meat is very, it's almost like liver. It's just like, it almost tastes like blood. I don't know. Yeah, it's like, too rich. Yeah. <clears throat> um, do you eat seafood? <sighs> if I am tricked into it by deep frying. Oh, well, fried cures all. But um, I will eat a shrimp so tempura. So you don't like sushi. I'll do a California roll, which is fake crab meat. I'll do... Are you? Would you consider yourself a picky eater? I mean, is there a lot of I'm things you don't eat? I'm not a picky eat? eater, and my partner Steve will tell you, uh, my, what does he say? You're not, you're, your food is, is um, limited, but not picky. You're not, you're limited in what you eat, but you're not picky. Cause like we've traveled the world and everyone's like, Oh my God, you don't eat sushi. You don't eat, <laughs> but in Japan, he's like, everyone's like, you won't be able to eat anywhere. I'm like, do you know how many types of different cuisine there are in Japan? There yeah. are so many that are not. And also me at a sushi restaurant, I'm fine. Like I have things that I will eat there. So I'm not. Well, and also, I mean, there's, I mean, not that you're eating McDonald's, but there's McDonald's everywhere. Like you'll find something you'll figure it oh, out. Yeah, no, I won't. I refuse to do anything in American in a foreign country. I say, so I, I'm the same, although I haven't traveled internationally in a while, but I'm the same about Starbucks. Like if I'm traveling, especially to a new city, I'm like, I don't want to go to a place I can go home. So if Absolutely I can get not. it at home, I don't want to go to a, in Except a different for, city. I did go to a couple I did some Starbucks in, I think I did a Starbucks. Oh, we did the Starbucks in, um, in Kyoto. Cause it's in the area of town. That's all the old. Well, and that's what I was going to say. Like internationally, it's different because like McDonald's has different food all over the world. Yeah. So I want to try the Sometimes like local try stuff, that. but it was exciting to go to a, a, a Starbucks that was, you know, like when the cities have rules that, yeah, you can have your thing, but it has to blend into the... Yes. So it had to be done in the Which style... Which is like of, Santa Barbara. or Santa, Santa Barbara Santa, does that, yeah. yeah. Everyone has to be mission style, mm -hmm. white walled with... The McDonald has Spanish. a turquoise sign. It does. Yeah. They can't um, have the yellow arches. It had to be turquoise. But yeah, we got to like, you know, sit on the floor and to, to Tommy Mads and take your shoes off I in the that. Starbucks. Isn't that... That's fun. Did, was it like a tea service or you're just drinking coffee and hanging out, but you had to take no, your shoes just, off? Like got, I just got my usual order, but they had like specific things that you can't get anywhere else. Yeah. Um, See, that's the kind of stuff I like because I like a trinket. I like a souvenir. <sighs> I like a site specific. Oh, trinkets. I, trinkets. So, um, oh, I should have brought you one. Now that I'm a giant man, I can't really buy off the rack. But in high school growing up when we traveled, my favorite thing to collect was drum roll hard rock cafe city shirts you and my mom i both. had and m one of my biggest regrets in life all thrown away all gone oh, damn. um isn't it wild i never it never occurred to me that the hard rock cafe meant like hard rock and roll hard heavy like almost heavy metal yeah what did you think it was actual rocks no but i thought it was more just like kitschy rock and roll but like hard rock means like it was all like Led Zeppelin and and yeah. Why the was who. my mom like we got to go to the Hard Rock and <laughs> it was I don't know why and I don't know how I got the bug. I think the first one I ever went to was in Vegas and it was still when there was only like four or five in the whole United States, you know, in the nineties. But like we went to one in Vegas and I just remember I like I kept. I think I still have them in like a trinket box from high school in my parents' basement or something. But like I did the thing where like I kept the napkins, I got the swizzle sticks, oh, the you know cocktail napkins. The I definitely I, yeah. got a drink that came in a, a collectible glass that you could keep the glass. Um, I'm still guilty of that. I have a hard time with bags, like a nice bag. Oh, tote bags especially. I mean, well, tote bag, yeah, but off like, camera you can't see it, but um, I ooh, keep, that's special. I keep all of my podcast equipment in a 
Lego for Target exclusive oh. bag when Lego and Target okay. did, uh, and I bought every color. I mean, I like that, but I mean, I can't like. I have a hard time throwing away like a nice paper bag from a, a store with like a, oh yes with like a fabric handle or something you know yeah like yeah like uh, even just like when apple remember when apple did the drawstring backpack bags oh, yeah. and it's like this is a bag okay, that you're supposed well, to that, throw away obviously what do i i just got a new laptop what do i do with that box yeah <laughs> What do I do with it, Todd? Do I, mean, I save it? How keep long it do I forever. save it for? Well, Apple's also doing that thing now where they're gluing in the inserts that cradle the laptop or the headphones or whatever. You know, so like before you could take everything out and have a very wax coated, matte box. finish, nice box. Yeah. But now they're gluing in the foam padding and cradle and everything that holds the laptop. So like the boxes, you can dig it out, but it's just, it's not well, the same. What do they want you to do box. with it? It's supposed to be fully recyclable and you can just throw it in your recycling bin it's and you're done with that not getting recycled yeah um but i hoarding <laughs> runs deep in my family i i have a hoarding uh gene that i've kept dormant yeah because i used to i i like what what's the book that my grandmother gave me it was called oh organizing from the inside out written by <laughs> julie morgenstein was it the 90s version of marie kondo yeah it was something that had been on oprah or something anyway <laughs> um great book where is it don't know can't find it that you got rid of uh probably but it was saying that if you experience great loss or some sort of trauma around death as a child it's one of the reasons why you have trouble letting go of things that would really mean nothing to anyone yeah. else like a bag like i would fully save my bag my plastic bags from disneyland and by traumatic i mean my all my pet deaths but i would used to save my disneyland bags and make collages Same. out of them like mm -hmm. what like, um, get well, rid of it so my i i blame it's funny that you say disney could be because i blame a lot of my hoarding on disney for humanizing everyday objects that you know like um the bag for instance it, it doesn't have a heart it doesn't have a soul it's not real it's just no. a bag but if i should ever get rid of it in my head it's saying don't get rid of me please keep i love you yeah. i've always been here for you i also get irrational connections to like hotel rooms like i get really sad i'm like goodbye i'm like that little i do that too boy, i always like say video. goodbye like, to stuff goodbye also, i get that from my mom of disney and trinkets i in high school collected disney watches that played music i'm familiar where are they now they're at my place i have them i still have them and i don't know what to do with them should i get should i sell them like they don't i don't use ebay ever like it's just i've never i've literally never bought anything on ebay yeah but i do have the app on my phone because occasionally i'll be like wait a minute i have this thing what's it going for on ebay and i am always blown away by by everything from the 90s from childhood i mean i've looked and it's like yeah i could sell it for 30 or 40 bucks so not, the, it sounds like the memory means more it's worth more i should say watches don't take up a lot of space see you came to the wrong place to talk about hoarding because i will just encourage it i'll be like don't get rid of it yeah and they would work if i replaced the batteries but what am i going to do where uh mickey mouse watch okay the worst one was i got this one that was a full mickey mouse head and like like the size of this microphone oh and it flipped up right and it, it like its mouth would move when it talked. yeah you press the thing and i would wear it to school and high school but i was embarrassed by it but i would wear it because i loved it but i was it mortified me yeah but just and i would hide it under, <laughs> i would only wear it with a long sleeve you were embarrassed about it but you loved it yeah um well see here's the thing that i got into for a little while which was shadow boxes and framing so if you have a fun little co collection like watches you know you could hang like six watches in a shadow box and make it art and then oh, you I could hang it on the wall and see it. What happens to that when I die, though? Like, who's? I mean, who cares? You're dead. Just like, just more clutter for someone else to clean up. Yeah. Maybe I'll just keep a couple. The one I'm obsessed with is the Scrooge McDuck one. I don't know why that one brought me so much joy. All the numbers were coins. Mm. Ugh. Did it make like coin noises, or did it say that like one, "We lucky dime"? That one didn't play music for some reason. But hmm. um well and two like you're you still have plenty of time you could get like ultra artistic rich and famous and then people it'll be like Marilyn Monroe's lipstick you know it'll sell at Sotheby's for a million dollars oh okay so yeah I'm looking forward to that moment mm -hmm. I mean you it's, won't be with us anymore but uh, people will it's buy too it late for me Todd it's not gonna happen <laughs> um there's a market for it there will be a market for it okay it's, it's never too late um 
but yeah so that's funny like we talked about all your content and stuff like that now you just booked a k drama like a legitimate in korea k drama uh-huh. right and but is the whole thing in english are you playing like an american and no, everything I'm, else is I'm in just korea a part of it's a minor role i i play i play like a white house staff person okay I, like the press secretary or something but they just they needed a group of english-speaking actors to play at this white house staff and funnily enough like the weekend before i'd gone out to do a part on a friend's movie in washington dc didn't have time i'd never been to dc didn't have time to look at the white house or anything but then a few days later i was in seoul south korea in a pretend white house over that's office. So, it's so Isn't crazy how fast that happened i know um yeah so just um when yeah, does that come out it was just us speaking english not till next year 25 and how many episodes are you in just the just the just the one one or two or one or two yeah yeah it's um, it's not that big of but a deal. still that's exciting. it seems like a bigger deal than it was but My, i so i have like you know a handful of dream locations to travel to and korea is on that list korea looks magical i've always went south korea obviously i look if you want to go i'll i have so many recommendations for you my friend chris uh you know those programs where uh it's like an Eng- you teach kids english but they don't want anyone to speak the native language in the country they're teaching because they want their kids to grow up without accents and they want their kids to grow up like fully immersed in english so yeah. there are these english universe or e- english schools for children to learn english but no one's allowed to speak korean or japanese or whatever yeah you have to do the whole thing in english so my friend chris taught in korea for like three years doing that program and he just he loved it i want to sign up to do the reverse of that like i just want to go for a month go to south korea and be in an immersive language to learn their language yeah (laughs) i also for you're like i know enough english thank you yeah i'm out uh for about an hour after i was done filming because it was so fun i i just my brain was i guess i was a little high on on the experience and i was like my god i am i'm gonna learn how to speak the language fluently i'm moving here i'm gonna become a huge star and that that lasted an hour and then i came back down Mm -hmm. to reality and i was like oh no they don't need you there's no no need for you they're enough well okay so now back to hoarding um do you do the same thing with with um i should say accessories that you do with hoarding where like okay i'm gonna start yoga and then i'm gonna get the fancy mat and i'm gonna get the fancy clothes and i'm gonna get the fancy headband and i'm gonna do all the accessories for yoga and like buy it all up and then do it for like two weeks and never go back because that's i love to do that i'm like i'm gonna become a quilter and i'm gonna buy every sewing machine and material and thread like i love to just like buy the accessories and then i'm like mm, i don't want to do this anymore <laughs> i'm pretty good about knowing my limits like i won't like i was really into sewing for several years a long time and i didn't um i didn't end up getting i didn't get all the stuff i got some stuff but like i like to be as cheap about it as i can until i know definitely well and that's how you started your instagram or when your Instagram blew up, when you started doing the, what was it called? Like it had a, it wasn't just like trash yeah, fashion. The link look for less. Yeah, that's um, what it was. Look for less. Yeah, and interesting because people are like, "Why did you stop doing that? Why won't you do it again?" Like, it had its moment. The joke and, is over. That's yeah. why I don't do the gay fat friend Photoshop anymore. Moving on. We did it. The joke um, is done. But also, like now that other people are doing it, it's too common and, and right. Also, I got bored of it because like once. Here's what I've learned about hobbies and like my interests outside of what i do professionally i like to i want to do the thing i want to figure it out and once i've figured it out i'm like great i did it yeah i make i can easily make tote bags on my ikea sewing when machine everyone when i was doing the sewing stuff and like you gotta sell those bow ties you gotta sell those tote bags and i was like yeah i should do that and then i was like i liked making it for me and for friends but then the idea of having to make that thing over and over and over well, and adding money and customers to any situation makes everything awful yeah it ruins like, it. do the thing uh oh the, like what is the saying like oh that if you really love doing something set it free <laughs> like as soon as you start to tra- monetize the thing that you love doing when when it catches on and people demand it from you then becomes a thing that you yeah well it's just like a job you know yeah so like do that, what you love and you'll never work a day something like that in your life but i will say 
is worth two in the bush. But isn't there a saying about like you should always have? It's okay to have a hobby that you're terrible at just to do just because you love. Well, like you can paint and you don't have to be a good painter, right? You don't have to be, you know. Rembrandt. Um, that's what I was going to get into too, back to the hoarding stuff. Cause it sounds like this actually would be perfect for you. Do, are you familiar with junk journaling, which is what no. people have morphed scrapbooking into, but now it's called junk journaling and you get a little moleskin journal and you only do it for yourself. People post it on TikTok as like, this is how I junk journal. But most of it is literally just for you. It's just journaling, but with like physical and visual objects. So like, you save all your receipts. You get business cards when you go to places you like. Um, you know, if you had popcorn at a movie that was in like a fun little container, you you rip the side of the container off, and so you save all these like literally, you know, junk, trash, these little pieces, and then you sit down with a glue stick and you just glue it, and it's like making collages. It's kind of like what you did with your Disneyland bags, but and then you just you know close up the moleskin once you're done with your page and put it to the side and it's just for you it's it's like visual journaling instead of words but you're keeping trash no i taught myself to get rid of that trash you gotta (laughs) gotta get that out of my life but i'm saying if you ever got back into trash i think junk journaling would be the way to go absolutely hard pass on junk journaling i'm very close to trying it because also uh they make these little about the size of a pop tart printers now where you can print little polaroids and little pictures from your phone yeah and so a lot of people have those printers, so they'll, you know. Except for the cartridges and the paper, it's so expensive. Is it? No one ever said, talks about price. I was like, the yeah, printer's the only $100. Yeah, $40, 100 bucks. Yeah. But like. The, the cartridges are like $8 the, 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 a piece. The Polaroid film a picture. is, yeah, literally yeah. $25 for 10 That's true. But yeah, I was <sighs> like, I, I think it would be fun to like do a little junk journal with that little camera. I don't know. Here's what I learned about junk and organizing because i'm i'm not i'm not a very organized person (laughs) and when i'm working on something if i'm doing a self-tape whatever it is the entire house is filled with chaos and i make a huge mess yeah but i always eventually i always clean it up put it back together and like i'm very chaotic with like trying clothes on and it's a big mess and then i clean it all up so i never let anything get past that yeah Cause I just really had to teach myself like, no, you have to, you're allowed to make the mess because I think it's the, the process while I'm doing it is like my brain can't be bothered by. Well, and it's your work. Your, your, I mean, auditions are work. Yeah. And you know, for lack of a better term, content is work. So like, like if I were cooking, I would not be cleaning up as I go along. Cause I just, I just don't want to be bothered with that. And you're like focused on the end product. Yes. Yeah. And so I will, but I will, you know clean up the chaos afterwards but when i was doing the garbage dresses i i was like oh this could turn into like a hoarding situation so easily because you're like but i need to keep everything because anything can be part of the materials so i came up i think i had six or eight like large clear plastic boxes with lids and i think they were organized by color and sort of material and if I used a material a couple times, then it had to go. Yeah. Um, to the recycling bin or whatever it was. Well, I remember we did that Oscar party for E yeah, when yeah. E came to your house <laughs> and then we all did looks and it was like a pre Oscar thing. Like we did it for whatever. I don't even remember, but yeah, I remember all your bins and you're like, this is, this is mostly black stuff. This is mostly brown stuff. This is mostly plastic. This is mostly, but if I know. got, if I, if I had beyond that, then it was too much and that, that's like then it's then your stuff is ruling your life yeah i feel like i'm really good now when i'm shopping when i'm traveling i remind myself like clothing is okay because i'm going to use it and then donate it eventually but like i'm better now about not buying so many souvenirs no, I'm lying. I will buy trinkets. <laughs> I buy lots of trinkets to use as gifts for people when I get back. Like I should. Oh, have that's fun. Had uh, I have trinkets that are waiting to give to you that I should have brought with me, but um, but nothing so big because like at least a keychain like you'll use it, it's gonna break and then it goes away. And but you just let it go out of your heart. It's have, not a thing you have to we be. We have like, one little curio cabinet in the kitchen. I'm like. That's allowed to be filled with tiny treasures, but 
nowhere else. Well, one of the other things I'm excited about, uh, junk journaling, if I ever get into it, which I'm still on the fence, but um, I feel like for me, since TikTok and Instagram is my job, pretty much, uh, and doing brand deals and stuff, but like, it's, I want to have something that I can create that will never be content because I hate having to make content out of everything if I choose to. And so like once once I start making content about something, it just loses a little bit of its sparkle. So I'm kind of excited to have something that like no one will see and I won't share and I'll I never post that. about it. I, I've talked to a couple other friends who make funny videos and stuff and I was just like, are you out of ideas? Because I'm out. I got nothing left. <laughs> It's empty. Yeah. Well, and also, I actually leaned into doing the same stuff because I know on TikTok, which TikTok is where I make most of my money, people just want the same thing over and over again. So I go back and forth of sometimes only doing Trader Joe's grocery hauls for two weeks because that's what everyone wants and that's what gets the views. But then I'm like, I'm more than that. But and I have other get, ideas. I can't, I've never been able to get my audience from Instagram to move to TikTok. Therefore, I cannot get enough numbers to monet. Are you monetizing just each view? Uh huh. It has to be over a minute. So any any video that is over a minute makes money. You have to have what a hundred thousand no followers. You can join. I think you have to have ten thousand followers. I do. Why won't they let? I've applied and I, they never let me. Oh, I was gonna say. I'm sure you got the notification. If you just go back through your system notifications, I'm sure it's there that they they're like you're invited to join the Creator Rewards program or whatever. Look again. It's probably there. Because all I know is that they were like. If you have a, vi you can join once you have a video that's gotten over a million views, which I did, and you, or you have to have a hundred thousand followers. I'm like, I got the views. I don't know why. Well, let me. Sorry, you guys don't need to hear about this. No, that's weird. I yeah, I thought it was just ten thousand followers, not not a hundred. But they also could have changed it. I've been doing it for four years, so maybe it's too many people joined, and now it's a hundred k or something. I don't know, but um, but yeah. So TikTok kind of demands of you doing God, the same thing. Money at it? No one's. Yeah. I'm not making the only time I, mean, I make gambling. money is when I when somebody hires me to make a little ad, but it's that's kind of gambling um, because you I get addicted to it because when a video does well and you make all this money, you're like, see, it works. See, I, I played the slot machine for six hours and I won. But then other times I will make a very great, well produced video that I'm very passionate about and it gets a thousand views. And I'm like, well, I swear the harder I work on a video, the, the smaller it's like, the views are. It's like the apps know that you tried and worked hard, yeah. you know, because some of my biggest videos that have reached the farthest I have made in less than 20 minutes and didn't even really think about and just made it and posted, you know, I had um, a video that I was not going to post cause I was so embarrassed by it. And I sent it to my friend Jack, and I was like, "Should I? I don't want to post this. It seems cringe. Should I do it?" And he's like, "Yes, post it." I'm like, "Oh, fine." It was just me crying on the street of Paris because of dogs, and it got a million views. And I was not going to post on it on Instagram or TikTok. Yeah, on Instagram. That's great. Um, so no one, no one cares about me on TikTok. Instagram uh, is all about reels now. So like, don't ever post a static picture. They don't care. Oh, I've stopped. Posting. They will. Yeah. They will die. No, no. But, I only um, do the reels, but we don't get paid for. I, reels I used views. to get paid. They stopped, which is so they annoying. They tried out one little thing where you were getting, it and they're like, for each, for each billion views you get, you get fifty dollars. <laughs> I actually you're like, made like how pretty good money for just posting on Instagram during the pandemic. But yeah, they stopped all those bonuses and it was, and now I'm in the threads bonus for threading, which is just Twitter, but, um, it caps out at $500, which, you know, I'm not upset about, but like I clear the bonus in like three days. What are the bonuses for, for videos or for, no, just for threads for posting on threads. So you just have to post literally just streams of consciousness. <sighs> but if you have more followers, which you have, I, I think it's every, I, I think it's every hundred thousand followers on Instagram since Instagram owns threads. Um, like my bonus cap is $500, but I know that there are some bonus caps that are $5,000 a month. And if you have over a hundred K look into it. Um, I don't know how they pick people. I just literally got a notification. was like, you're invited to threads. I've just sort of bonus. given up. I've just surrendered to the fact of like it. Unless, unless you're cool nobody cares and they're not they'll reach out to you if they think you're cool and they want to give you the money that's how it is with brands but the apps themselves it is kind of a meritocracy where like you can earn it 
how, just by having a following and stuff. Difficult though. They don't tell but me. then also like sometimes you join these programs and then they shut your content off because they don't want to pay you. And that's happened to me on TikTok before. I'm like, oh, this video was a minute and five seconds, which means they have to pay me because it was over a minute and it's really good. And like, I can tell in the analytics that people are watching it, people are commenting, people are sharing, but it won't hit the like FYP and the discover page and stuff because if it, if it got millions of views, then they'd have to pay me a lot of money, you know? That's my that's my TikTok conspiracy theory for the day. I yeah, I've just accepted that just relax, Tom. And if if it's if they think you're cool, then they'll want to do business. If not, that's fine. How do you become cool? You can't think about that. There's no way to become cool. You just have to be cool because people think you're cool. And how do they think you're cool? You can't be, if you th- are worried about what they're thinking of you, you'll never be cool. So just <laughs> be cool, It's a man. vicious cycle. Yeah. Well, and also you are cool. Um, and you work a lot. The, that's the thing too, I, is that you have an amazing resume, resume and you work a lot and you, you book, she books, you book. And thanks. I mean, you have a career. You don't need TikTok. I, there's so many squirrels outside the window running by. They're watching so us. It's when you give me this, I, I really, choreography. I just want to Judy Garland. It. Yeah. If you're listening, if you're not watching on YouTube, if you're just listening, uh, my microphones have very long cords and he keeps whipping it over his shoulder, like a Judy Garland boa, or I guess cord. She, she loved Merry the cord. Merry Christmas. No, that's Carpenter's. What's, um, what's the Christmas song that Judy Garland sings? A uh, Christmas song. I don't know. Well, uh, she sings uh, Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas. Oh, there we go. Have yourself a <laughs> Merry Little Christmas. <laughs> well, I think on that note, it's a perfect time to transition to our final segment, which oh, is... It's over? Did we talk watch. about anything? We didn't talk about anything. We talked about so much. People will learn so much from Ugh. this. Uh, but our final segment, which is What's Your Order? What's Your Order? I have here a delicious little soup to go container that is was filled with America's favorite fast food restaurants, but you're actually my last podcast guest of my LA invasion Whoa, podcast week. The honor. Um, so you get the very last restaurant. We're going to pick out a fast food restaurant and we're just going to talk about our orders. And we've already talked about so much food. So your, what's your order is? Wow. Okay. Taco Bell. Taco Bell. Bing, 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 bing. Okay. I have a long history, history? with Taco Bell. Are we going to run for the border? Um, as a child, it was my favorite restaurant. We were, were you obsessed with the Chihuahua? No, t- Todd. That was Todd. That was like in the two thousands. Are you talking about the dawn of Taco Bell? Like when you I'm were a kid? Dawn of Taco Bell. Oh, all right, all right. I'm talking about brick building with, with a the, bell. With the Did, bell, they, yeah. And you would go in, and they would write your order. Your, Excuse your, me. They would write your order. They're standing, and they would write your order above them on a small chalkboard, <laughs> so that the kitchen behind them could see it. You're facing them. Okay. They would write it with a piece of chalk. What? Now is this like pre-franchise, like before it went national when it was just Southern California? No, it was definitely. Well, it was definitely. I don't know. Because you're from here. I'm from here, so this was in Southern California. This was probably you know like late '80s, mid '80s. Um, but what yeah. did you get? What was your order? It was, well, has back it changed? Then, I was like, I, well, I would just have. Oh gosh. Okay, I remember the like the the week that the Mexican pizza came out. It was called <sighs> Pizzazz Pizza. What? That was the original name. Pizzazz Pizza. Correct me if I'm wrong, internet. And Actually, don't. I want it to be that. I was... God, I loved it so much. I still do. It's my go-to. But I cried when they took it off the menu. I was like, what's the point of going to Taco Bell now? When, when I lived in... Okay, so then high school... So, like, fast forward high school, they built one. It was, like, by our school, so we'd always stop after mm-hmm. school. Um, when it was still... You, a taco for 50 cents and, or you know they had like a yeah, very like cheap a menu cent. yeah um and so it was doable for high school kids because that's the kind of pocket change we had yeah and then okay after college my first apartment in west hollywood was on king's road near melrose and so they're like the one and only taco bell in on beverly the LA non drive through yeah <laughs> the non drive through one which i live i'm back in that neighborhood now um, and I would eat there so often. And then I don't know what happened. When did I stop eating? Well, I stopped going to fast food because I was like, is it killing me? Maybe it is. 
And then I stopped eating um, red meat. So I basically well, were you also stopped. going Hollywood? Like, were you caught up in it and being like, I, I have to eat healthy and raw and vegan and whole? No, and- I never did that. But I was just like, oh, I, I need to stop going to Taco Bell at two in the morning. Like, <laughs> this can't continue. Yeah. Um, I will say that because that, that Beverly Taco Bell was our Taco Bell for 10 years and uh, not having a drive through really does cut down on how much Taco Bell you consume because the fact that you have to park, which they have eight parking spaces and they're always full yeah. and um, it's probably full of riffraff that you don't want to encounter on a daily basis. So having to go inside a Taco Bell and just deal with people really cuts down on how much Taco Bell you consume. Yes. Also, I'm lactose intolerant, as you know, mm-hmm. and for a long time, I was convinced that the pills weren't working. Turns out, like, sometimes you need to take more than one. Yeah, and it's all about, like, timing, too. You got to take them during yeah. the meal, so like, at the I right time. So, I just got burnt by the pill, by the lactate pill, <laughs> and so I was like, I'm not eating dairy, so that, like, kind of, like, took me out of Taco Bell for a really long time. Oh, yeah, especially, yeah, if you're a chicken only. Um, But I... I did go recently. I've gone two times this year. In California or in the States? To Beverly. Oh, total. Well, nice. total. I've got to talk about two times total this year, both <laughs> to the one in Beverly. And I went recently late at night. And like it's now like a self-service kiosk. And I put my card yeah. up. And right when I did, some man was like, did something with his phone. And there was other guy with his phone nearby. And I was like, okay, either they're picking up DoorDash delivery, or they like just did something to steal my identity credit, credit card info. <laughs> yeah. So I immediately locked that card and I still haven't dealt with replacing it. But so anyway, I was like convinced that there are scammers <laughs> at that Taco Bell. Um, but also, yeah, that's a, that's a chaotic experience going to that Taco Bell. So now that Especially you're late at night, now that you're a chicken only adult, what did you order? So what I ordered was, the pizzazz pizza, the Mexican pizza with Just no beans. meat. Yeah. Which is still heavenly. It's pretty much the same because flavor. It's a deep fried flour tortilla. Oh God, it's so good. They're so good. And the red sauce that they put on it is so good. That red sauce is so good. I I've never asked, and I've been thinking about this, because like my favorite dish at Casita del Campo is the nachos because they put the enchilada sauce on the nachos. Why is enchilada sauce not used more? Right? Like, can you request enchilada sauce on nachos at Taco Bell? Because that would change the world. If I could get the Mexican pizza red sauce on Taco Bell nachos, I don't know if I'd ever eat it in another restaurant. Could we just say add red sauce? Would they do it? I don't know. I might have to like go inside. I'm very, I get very nervous at a drive through at a drive through. I get yeah. very nervous in a situation where people could get backed up behind me. So I'm always afraid to like, I don't special order. I don't really need to special order, but I don't special order. I don't like to ask questions. That's one of my favorite things about fast food is like everybody has the same order. So you don't need to ask I, questions. That's the thing about special ordering at fast food. It's like, we're not at the Ritz Carlton. Like this is an STK. They're not here to like <laughs> meet every demand of yours. My roommate, when I first moved to LA, Allie, love of my life, like she literally changed my life by letting me live with her. Lived with her for five years. We would go to McDonald's and she would order a burger, medium rare. <laughs> like say the words. Allie, <laughs> I'm looking into the lens. Allie, She'd be like, you're not allowed to do that. Can I get a, can I get a Big Mac medium Did they rare? they say, sure. They just say yes. I mean, it's not even an option. It's That's not, not even possible. possible. <laughs> I think, hasn't the meat been cooked through? No, it yes. hasn't. Well, and there's laws in California, certain fast, like if you, you can't get meat. fast food restaurants has to be cooked to a certain temperature. Um, Cause yeah, we'd also go to In-N-Out and she would always order her burger medium rare and there's, they would just be like, okay. And it was never medium rare. It was not red on the inside, but God love her. She uh, said that was how you get it fresh. And I was like, mm, mm, it's all the same. Um, Wait, what is the rest of my order at Taco Bell, though? So you got a Mexican pizza, no meat, uh, any kind of like tacos, burritos, french fries, cheesy they fiesta they potatoes. They do fry it at Taco Bell, It's they? seasonal. Yeah, they're nacho fries. They're, de- they're amazing. What? They're a battered french fry with uh, nacho, almost like Dorito cheese sprinkled on top, powder. Okay, I'm taking a hard right, and I need to bring up... Say it. Del Taco oh so good because like i try not to talk about her because they don't exist in seattle and oh, jack in the box wow. bought del taco and what? Said, 
in 2020 and said they were going to take Del Taco National, so be every market, and then they never did it. So there's no, I don't have access to Del Taco, and it makes me so angry. Okay, look, Del Taco, I don't know what's going on. I don't know what their business model is, but every time I go, the drive through it is the most pleasant experience I've had. They are, with, that is a good drive in LA. They are always they're pleasant. always so, especially the one out in the suburbs of my parents. Like they're so friendly. Yeah. What are they? It's like In and Out. I don't eat In and Out, but the staff is generally quite nice. They're so nice, and I do think that their stuff is like their ingredients are a little more fresh. Maybe I've just been convinced by their commercials, but like <laughs> Del Taco. And for a while, they had um, fake meat at Del Taco. Oh, like Impossible. Yeah, or it was great. And then they had turkey ground meat for a while. So I was getting burritos with ground meat. And then here is a very controversial announcement, which is Del Taco's fries are the best fries. It, I love a crinkle cut. I love crinkle that you can get cut. macho fries or monster fries. You get a you get a literal supersized drink cup filled with French fries. Wait, what? Weird. I don't know about this. No, that's how they serve their fries. But here's what I love is that you can then put hot sauce on your fries. Yes. And you get multiple options. Like there's the the low, medium, and high level of spice to their... Well, and that's why I like the nacho fries at Taco Bell because they also... So you can just get a side of fries, but then they also make nachos. So instead of chips... You can get fries. So it's almost like Mexican poutine. Gosh, you can get it like layered I, up on top of fries. Go see, do you think it's happening right now? Taco well, Bell? so it, Taco Bell is so fickle. I hate them because they will bring something back and then take it away. And then they'll make something seasonal and then make something permanent. So nacho fries for the last year were permanent. Like they finally added it permanently to the menu. Wow. And then they just announced they're going back to seasonal. So I'm like, I don't know if Taco Bell currently has them or not, but they are worth the trek. Um, now I'm remembering in high school, I would. Because oh, they also serve them with cheese sauce. Mm. So you can dip dip them into cheese. I used to get in high school nacho supreme. Same. God, so good nacho supreme and a chicken quesadilla. I think that was my order. That's my that was my pandemic order because we were door dashing Taco Bell a lot or just going over because it was you know a few God, blocks my mouth away. Was watering. I don't know. I know. Why, I'm so hungry. I don't know why I don't let myself eat the fast food anymore. I don't know. I mean, as long as you're not denying yourself joy, if you're just not thinking about it, like if, if you're, cause like I crave things, I have a very large crave cycle in my body. Yeah. Um, and I'm also kind of susceptible to, to, uh, influencing. Like if I see a Taco Bell commercial and I'm not really paying attention and then I'm like, Oh shit, I haven't had Taco Bell in a while. That looks delicious. Yeah. And then I'll just start thinking about it and craving it. So I just, if I you're really, sitting at home craving Taco Bell for days and not getting it, that's one thing. But if you just don't think about it, it's not bad. I, I really crave fried food and I've got to not do it because now I've got cholesterol and things and, yeah. and what's the other thing? Blood pressure that I'm dealing with. So like I'm trying not Is to Is that eat. in your family too? Probably. I don't yeah. know. But I just started some medication and I don't know how I feel about it. But so like I shouldn't be eating that stuff. So I try to avoid yeah. it. But like I have been offered uh, blood pressure medication because I am right at the cusp of like high blood pressure, but blood pressure medication is the one you have to take for your, the rest of your life. And so I don't want to start something like that because that makes me nervous. Even though blood pressure is runs in my family. Okay, it's look, bad. I was resist. I was, I felt the same way. And then my doctor was like, cause I was on the cusp and he was like, Hey, I just, you know, we've been testing you for two years and you're like, it's, 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 it's time. Yeah. And I, uh, he was like, I don't want to bum you out, but I had a patient just like you. And he was like, no, I'm going to, I'll just do it with diet and exercise. And he was eating really healthy and he was doing it and he's dead now. He just died recently. Yeah. And you could tell that it would happen. He was like very sad about it. Yeah. And so then I was like, okay, well we're going to start the medication. So that kind of is what put me over the edge on that but I my know. uh my family both sides my mom and my dad there's no cancer anywhere in our family it's all hearts it's all hearts and blood and so yeah, and my mom and my her dad's. father both had heart attacks in their mid 40s and i just turned 44 so i'm like i'm also the biggest person in my family that's ever lived uh but i do go to cardiology i'm on top of it i see a cardiologist okay, okay. Uh, i go to my doctor regularly and what do they say were they like Okay, well, do this if you're not willing to take the medication. Um, so I had a uh, plaque scan, like a full-on like 
lowered in the tube plaque scan of my heart and i have zero blockages zero plaque build up anything okay. i do have high cholesterol in my blood but not in my veins like it's not building up yet okay um which is treatable with diet and then um so my cardiologist said my heart is perfect i have nothing to worry about uh my doctor via blood work and blood pressure says i'm close to blood pressure meds so it just makes me nervous because also i heard there's like weird side effects like you'll never have a boner again and stuff like that and it's like well boners are fun i don't want to lose those yeah that hasn't been i haven't noticed that oh that's good but isn't there something about joints? I don't know. Uh, with the, um, I took uh, a statin, which is what lowers your cholesterol. Yeah. I took that for a long time, and it did fuck up my joints. Bad. Like, and I was like, "Why am I always so sore? Like, I just ran a marathon. What is happening?" Didn't even think that I was taking a daily pill, and it could be that. And then I finally looked up the side effects of statins, and they were like extreme muscle fatigue and joint soreness. And I was like. Oh, great. Oh, cool, cool, cool. Oh, God, that's the one I'm dealing with. And I hate when you have exact symptoms of something, like textbook symptoms, and you're like, oh, it was just that the whole but time. Does it, does it just create the pain, or does it like ruin your joints? Uh, I recovered. From, like I stopped taking it, and the pain went away. So, um, Also, I did it... Uh, I don't know the exact, I did it for a long time. So it didn't do permanent damage. It was just while I took it, I was like, why do I feel like I just lifted weights for two days? You know? Um, wow. Sorry to take it down like that. No, it happens because we're all aging. We're all getting old and it's I'm such not, a treat. I refuse. And a dream. I won't. I can't. No, no, no. I stopped aging. I told myself, self, stop, stop aging. You're done. You're done. I'm going to be like that man who's trying to de-age himself. <gasps> Have you seen? He's terrifying. I hate him. Is he wearing pancake makeup from my high, like my middle school production? He's full on bed nye. Is he Ben Nye? He's the soft olive palette number nine or whatever. He's like using the pale. It's like he's literally like dipping the he's sponge the, in water. He's got and the, the white the triangle sponges, the wedge sponges. He's putting it on. He's getting the the weirdest filler, and I think he's having like color work done like bleaching and stuff um he looks like the male version of megan that robot that kills yeah, people yeah like he something about his eyes and his face and and he's the hair not color. fooling any of us he's he like also he's, like the weird like the, the hair, hair color is not matching what it, i'm pretty sure it's either a, a, a system or he had hair transplant because it's not natural but also he says he's aging in reverse and i'm like who who th- believes that okay, we're not like, we don't believe you most recent video and it was like oh yeah you do you look younger but you also look terrifying i think he's just using like rupaul face tape and pulling it back wearing a wig i don't know but he creeps me out so much isn't it wild like you could have that much money and you're like god i need attention i'm gonna yep. do this thing because i want to be famous well and 90 i would say 99 percent of the stuff you could do as a rich person to make yourself live longer is all internal like you're say you're a billionaire you could make yourself live to 110 probably with science and transplants and medication and stimulant you know like steroids i'm sure there's some, some injection you can get to live longer not forever uh but also yeah. you're still going to look old on the outside why like you you could if you're obsessed with not dying that's one thing but this guy just he says he's anti-aging because of his looks and it's like no one's buying it you look like an old person trying to look young i just feel it like just creeps me out I, would so take that, I feel like i would just take all that money and just be trapped like don't you want to travel did you want to go somewhere that's so something? funny because last episode that i recorded with jackie b we uh devolved into that too it's like why are billionaires not just taking their money and going to a beach and never talking to us again like we don't need to hear you're rich you can do anything yeah why, why like, do you need to be in the public uh, why eye? do you need so much attention yeah you already have the all rest the money of us are don't have money but we get attention go like, on a cruise you don't get to you don't get to have both <laughs> you don't need both and no one wants you to have both just go on a cruise and never talk again I, it's just yeah it's so weird but also I, I, did the, brooke tell you that story about going to perform uh the game of thrones musical in the seychelles for like a very rich no it's on this topic because it's just like this rich i don't know if it's my story to tell never mind did brooke write a game of thrones musical no it's it was at the she was she did it at the french festival in edinburgh and it's a bunch of people from la i think like ucb people mm-hmm. but there's like so there's like this very rich person's assistant goes and like scouts shows that he think that this guy will like 
and then brings them to this brings like a couple weeks of program like different shows okay and like we'll perform so for- he's he's pretty much like producing a regional theater summer stock for himself in the seychelles yes well, and that's the way to do it that's what i want to that's do. the way to do it bring I want people command, to you i want command performances yes on a private bring, island bring the jester to court have them perform for us but we won't say anything yeah if you're rich pay artists to come to you and perform for you that's like how i that's do, all you need I to do. do have a fantasy a I, perfect world could exist amen um i have a fantasy <laughs> that one day Tilda Swinton, I did a play where I played Tilda Swinton called Tilda Swinton Answers an Ad on Craigslist. And I'm dying to do it in Seattle, by the way. Come. Jane moved up there. Oh, really? I'm sorry, I shouldn't say that. She's up there. She visits there a lot. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, I, I do have this fantasy that one day we get summoned by her. And she just wants to see because we know she knows about it. Wait, Tilda's never come? I thought she came. No, her, her niece... I handed a flyer to her niece in Edinburgh because she went to school there. And she was like, this is my auntie. I'm like, oh, you should come see yeah. the show. And so I know she sent her like photos. Of well, because you did it in New York, right? And we did it in New York. We've done it. F- some of her like agents and things and her stylist came and her stylist brought people, including Gwendolyn Christie, to um, who did what did she play on Game of Thrones. Um, she was on Game of Thrones. I can't remember her character's name, but she was the knight. Tar- Tarth. Uh, oh, of Tar? Tarth. Something of Tar. Tarth. Yes. Why she was also on Star her- Wars. Yes. Anyway, like she showed up and it was magical. So a lot of people have come to see it, but Tilda's never seen it. And I do think she should option the rights and play herself in the movie version of it. Well, that's the dream. But also like she is, she's big in New York uh, comedy and theater because she does all that stuff with Julio and like she's been to Cola Scola shows and like she's in the gay comedy world then of why New York. Why not come see ours? Maybe it's too weird to like if it's about you. Yeah. Um. Anyway, do you have a dream that she summons us to her castle in Nairn? She lives in Nairn, Scotland, and that we just go into like a very empty sort of castle <laughs> space. And there's like hundreds of chairs set up and it's just her sitting in the middle of all the chairs. Like a throne almost. And there's like, there's no like, it's only natural light, just like candlelight <laughs> and no one else. And we do the whole show and, and she doesn't laugh once. And then she just leaves and she doesn't speak to us. That's my fantasy. <laughs> See, that is how, like, that's how it should be adapted to do a film. Because you know how, like, uh, Adaptation was a book about the Orca Thief, but then uh, he had uh, Spike Jones directed it and stuff. Right? Spike Jones directed it? Anyway, uh, instead of turning the Orca Thief book into a movie, they he turned it into... Uh, the writer of the movie turning the book into a movie. Like it's like a movie within a movie within a movie. So Maybe I think that's the best way to that. do that as a movie of uh, almost like waiting for Guffman kind of just like have a play within a play. And but you know how sometimes like the play within a, like the play won't actually like if you take something that was funny, then when you do it, it's not funny when it's a play. Okay. You know, when you, okay. <laughs> you know, when you're watching a show and like the Maisel show or any of the shows about comedians yeah. and they get up on this fictional show and do stand up comedy. Do you run the room? Do you run from the room screaming? Oh, like my skin crawls off my body. I have, I have very strong internal cringe for things like that. And so it makes me uncomfortable. Me, like I get the same feeling as that, as like watching a sex scene in front of my parents when I was in high school. Like, yeah, I got to get out. Like yeah. my, I go into fight or flight mode. Like same. I got to leave the room. Why is fake stand-up comedy so unbearable i think because i can see the acting so they are acting like what they think a stand-up comedian is trying to tell jokes how they think a comedian would tell them and it's i can see all of the the gears and the you know cogs and stuff moving of production and so that's what makes my skin crawl the most it's just like oh i can see rachel brosnahan you're just an actor you're just making choices you're reading things that were written for you Uh, i can see it all that's the thing i i think i think the key is when you're watching a stand-up comic you're like that something that came out of their brain this is re- whether it's like real or not like yeah it seems real like what they're talking about 
is so funny because it's coming from them. But then when it's just a script they're reading, you know, it's not, it doesn't seem real anymore. Like mm -hmm. the whole excitement of it is you're watching a person tell a real thing here and now. But then when you watch the filming of it, it just. Yeah. Well, but, but not to be confused with watching people's actual specials. Like that's still funny to me because it's them. But yeah. when it's pretend, well, and this is an up, uh, another thing I wanted to talk to you about. We'll we'll wrap up after this because we're going a little long, but it's fine. Um, do you? I, I struggle with this really bad. It's probably like half jealousy, but also half uh, suspension of disbelief. But do you have trouble watching anything? knowing the people like in real life knowing the people that are in it like we were watching you know guardians of the galaxy and a friend of mine halfway through pops up as an alien and he's kind of a lead and i was like oh i took me out of it i know him in real life i got so it's close not good to anymore. booking that part by the way i think they i think they auditioned <sighs> everyone um i was on hold though they had like they were holding my schedule Ugh! you would have been so much better no he he was, he was great. great he was great he was really but, funny um, uh it, it does take me, me out of it. Like I, I was able, and that one knowing that when it came on, and I was like, "No, this isn't," because they'd never told me what it was for. I just knew, yeah, what it was that director, and they wouldn't tell me. And it was obviously like kind of a fake script, yeah. But then that part came on, and the script was sort of similar to what I. Did. I was like, "No, that's that part." But I was actually able to not. Freak out to me. I, I really enjoyed what he did with this. So I was, I was happy. You know, he was but great. It at, but also, it just, I'm like, oh, I wish I could do that. Uh, you know, but also, I'm like, oh, well, I know him and it's not fun anymore. You know, it's just like, I get bummed out and it kind of just takes me out of it when I know people that are in something. I, unless I know, unless it's someone I really love, like you, you know. That's why when someone's like, oh, I just, you just popped up in this show I was watching and sometimes I apologize. I'm like, sorry for taking you out of the reality of that experience <laughs> you were having it. Because I do think when you know, when you don't know the people in it, you're able to escape into the world. Because when I'm watching something, sorry, I am all over the place today. When I'm watching something, I really feel like it's happening. That's why I have a problem with scary movies. It's like, it's too real. Yeah. And so I do think when you know the person, you're like, oh, this isn't real anymore. Yeah. Unless it's somebody, I, I, I it's kind of a, a not a judgment of my friendship but it kind of it's a proof of friendship when I, it excites me like when we saw you in cabin in the woods i didn't i don't think i knew you were in that or until i saw it or whatever but uh yeah rob and i were both like oh my god it's tom like we were excited and so i was like oh that i, I that means also, i really like him as a friend when, also like when i have to watch myself in something just to like put it on my reel or whatever because obviously i don't want to watch myself ever in something because it's just well, also, you know what that day was like. You know how many tokes to take. You know what you had for lunch. I, I think that's why you we, know who was most late to people set hate and watching pissed everybody themselves off. in a thing is because you. I cannot disappear. It looks like fake acting to me. Yeah, it doesn't look good. It looks terrible. Because you know how many people were behind the camera staring at you. Yes. You know how many takes it took, and this person coughed all day, and like it's it's work. So you, it's torture. Yeah, to you watch know that everything. But I guess with uh, with people I know. I do think that's well. Here's the thing: I think I watch mostly non-American television because I'm able to just disappear and enjoy <laughs> yeah, it. You know, because, nobody's gonna pop in. Yeah, nobody's gonna pop up, <laughs> and I'm just enjoying it, and I'm not judging it. And there's no possible way that I'll be on it, so I'm not like, got it. To quote Corky, got it. Uh, not Corky. To quote Michael Hitchcock in that movie, got it. Show like that show. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm able Corky! to. Corky, Corky. Corky! um yeah no it's well that's part of the entertainment industry also yeah. i have not looked at the camera and the sun has slowly creeped in the window it's really I'm, lighting you i'm in. angelically glowing it looks like i have the drag race season one filter on i'm literally blurred um also sorry i came into my gym clothes to your podcast. oh you're fine uh it, that literally looks like a very trendy expensive t-shirt um shout out to um strange ways new haven what is that it's a store in New Haven, oh, and fun. I know the guy that um, I once released a line of pins, and they were sold. Oh, here. that's right! Remember when we tried to do merch? Oh no, you were asked about the pins. You didn't try to do the merch yourself. No, I, no, I just li I not licensed, but like I just did three pins. It was like a glue gun. Yeah, I did help design them, and yeah. then they released them, and I sold them, and then it was done. Oh, that's great. Um, thank you so much for coming to Glendale and doing the show. <sighs> 
I've been wanting to have you on forever, and I'm so glad it finally worked well, out. I'll see you in Seattle. Yeah, and we'll do a part two. I'm sure I'll um, be there soon. Where? So we talked about social media, but where would you like people to find you, and how can they find you? Yeah, just come see me on Tommy Lank at, on Instagram. Oh, yeah. Are you Tommy now? I forgot. No, it's always been Tommy. But in no. In person, in, in real I'm life? Saying, do people call you Tommy in real life? I'm definitely split down the middle with people who call me Tommy and people who call me Tom. Because you've always, I, I mean, I met Tom. you as a Tom. Yeah. Everyone that I know calls you Tom. It's weird. I think friends from college call me Tommy. I think I met like a fan of yours one time and they were like, oh my God, you know Tommy Link. And I'm like, do I? <laughs> it's interesting because I started out as a Tommy and then I was forced to become a Tom. I think they were trying to, school was trying to butch me up in middle yeah. school. <laughs> so anyone prior to middle school calls me Tommy. High school people call me Tom. Yeah. College people call me Tommy. Friends like you call me Tom, but then people who know me from now from Instagram call me Tommy. Also, you uh, your last name in certain circles is Link, and in certain circles is Lank. So is it Link or Lank? It's Lank, like Lanky lad. Like I'm I'm Lanky. Like Lanky. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. It's Tom Lank. Um, yeah. So well, I feel privileged to know Tom Lank, and thank you so much for doing my it's show. Pleasure, pr- pleasure, pleasure. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm not drunk. Not right now. But you can be if you Same. want. Same. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and watching. And I hope you guys enjoyed the show. And, Where do people um, watch this? Uh, YouTube. You Just can watch clips? it on YouTube. Or, oh, okay. YouTube. There will be clips on TikTok, and then uh, it's streamed on Spotify and Apple. And I'm going to look into. I I added the link to my Instagram because you told me about it. I yeah, can added- you believe? Can you believe, <laughs> listeners, that I went to find his podcast last night on his Instagram? profile and it wasn't there yeah i totally thought i had filled in all the links on my various social medias and i just did not and so it is now linked in the bio of my instagram thank god um, gff and friends and uh yeah this has been a wonderful episode my longest episode to date we did it and um i that's wild i sat down here and i was like gff and friends and i was like i had to censor myself because saying gay fat was getting uh you know, suppressed on YouTube. So I had to lose the gay fat and just go by GFF now. I, it's a, I just didn't even put it. I was like, what are those friend, letters? Good fast friends. <laughs> That's fun. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys so much for listening and watching and liking and sharing and telling your friends and uh, come back. It works if you work it. All right. Uh, we love you. Goodbye. Enjoy the pizzazz pizza. <laughs>